Hello viewers, how are you? Today we will see about a peritonsillar abscess or a quincy. This condition is very common in children, but uh, it can also uh, occur in adults. And also there are risk factors such as dental infection, diabetes mellitus, smoking and so on. So we'll see today about the clinical picture, management, risk factors and uh, complication of this uh, peritonsillar abscess or quincy. This uh, abscess is collected within the peritonsillar space which lies in a capsule of the tonsil and uh, superior constrictor muscle. Or a localized collection of pus in the peritonsillar uh, tissue that forms as a result of uh, suppurative tonsillitis. And the cause of this uh, peritonsillar abscess is uh, untreated or partially treated tonsillitis. So uh, any patient with uh, uh, repeated or uh, chronic tonsillitis will can result in uh, peritonsillar abscess if uh, untreated or uh, partially treated. So this uh, peritonsillar abscess has a, a causative organisms. So it can be anaerobic or aerobic microorganisms. But it is very common to have these aerobic microbes like uh, Streptococcus and Staphylococcus aureus. Of all uh, group A uh, beta hemolytic streptococci are very common. So the pathophysiology is uh, uh, acute uh, tonsillitis or pharyngitis which is untreated or partially treated will result in uh, uh, get uh, tonsillar crypt uh, infected and sealed off and this uh, forms as intratonsillar abscess and this tonsillar abscess will burst into peritonsillar space and uh, uh, peritonsillitis will form and finally uh, peritonsillar abscess will be formed. Sign and symptom of uh, peritonsillar abscess, though it is very common in children, it can also can happen in adults and uh, two to eight days uh, before uh, abscess formation. Uh, they will have uh, unilateral sore throat and pain during swallowing, which is called odinophagia, and uh, fever will be there. Headache and malaise also will be there. So this patient will present to you with muffled voice or hot potato voice. This is as a result of edema of the pharynx as well as uh, uh, swelling around the peritonsillar region. So this patient also may present to you with a neck pain which is associated with tenderness and lymphadenopathies. This patient also may present to you difficulty of swallowing of saliva which can result in excessive saliva formation and halitosis also will be there. This patient also may have referred pain to the ear. So the other uh, sign includes trismus. So this patient, especially if they are uh, involved with parapharyngeal spaces, they can result in uh, trismus and uh, uh, inability to turn their head. So the other manifestation is a deviation of the uvula, which is uh, uh, deviating to the opposite side of the abscess, and also redness and edema of the tonsil. The diagnosis of this uh, peritonsillar abscess is uh, primarily uh, history and physical examination. So in this case, uh, during physical examination, you can uh, aspirate the abscess, but sometimes it may be non-yielding. In case the patient has a progressive uh, worsening of the symptom with association of uh, trismus and difficulty of turning the head uh, is mandating a CT scan evaluation. So uh, you can locate uh, the abscess in a CT scan so that it can be easily drained off. And ultrasound also can be used to locate the abscess. So the management is broadly divided into two, surgical management as well as medical management. So surgical management is very important in this case. So aspiration can be uh, done, which is uh, very simple. So uh, spraying local anesthesia to the mucosa, which is uh, swollen, can be done. So uh, you can infiltrate with uh, local anesthesia also, so that uh, you can uh, use a landmark which is uh, the base of the uvula uh, that meeting the anterior tonsillar pillar. So that's the injection site. So repeatedly you can aspirate the abscess. So during this procedure, positioning should be in sitting positions that can aid the patient to expectorate the pus in the blood uh, during uh, your procedure. 
so it can result immediate relief of uh, pain and uh, if this patient uh, is not uh, indicated for admission so you can send this patient to home so uh, next day this patient has to come so that uh, they are going to have another uh, aspiration uh, or incision and drainage of the abscess so after needle aspiration for those patients who are not responding for this procedure will undergo incision drainage uh, which uh, helps the patient in most cases otherwise tonsillectomy can be done if this is not working so in this time this procedure has risk of bleeding so medical management uh, includes uh, antibiotics steroids and analgesics so the uh, antibiotics uh, can be used uh, orally or uh, IV agent so as indicated if the patient is indicated for admission like uh, with the fever significant Christmas and uh, difficulty of swallowing those patients will be admitted so they will have uh, IV antibiotics so selection of antibiotics uh, can be empirical so clindamycin metrendazole or uh, combined with penicillin can be given for this patient so steroid need to be also uh, given to this patient because of risk of uh, edema and airway obstruction and uh, anti-pain management uh, is very important so if this peritonsillar abscess not treated they will uh, result in laryngeal edema and uh, parapharyngeal abscess and septicemia and also will result in brain abscess, endocarditis and lung abscess, airway obstruction, cellulitis, osteomyelitis of the jaw and neck and chest infection as well.